Welcome to Slayer the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, five underrated singers from 70s hard rock bands. Whenever you're seeing people put together lists of the greatest singers of the 70s, the greatest hard rock singers of all time, you see a lot of the same names, Robert Plant, Freddie Mercury, Steve Perry, Ronnie James Dio, the Deep Purple guys, Glenn Hughes, David Coverdale, Ian Gillen. You know, when we're talking like 70s hard rock, I thought it would be fun to pick five singers who, in my opinion, are kind of underrated. That you do not that they're unknown. You do hear people praise them, but they never seem to be really high up on people's lists if they're on people's lists at all. Okay, so I wanted to focus on guys. Not that they're solely bands just from the '70s, but where their uh, big success, shall we say, was in the 70s. They're known for being in a 70s rock, hard rock band. All right, so number one that I have is from Nazareth, Dan McCafferty. Uh, you can see here a picture in the back. Uh, he's one of the early guys to have this very, like, sandpapery, gritty, over-the-top type voices. I'm trying to really think of, like, who... Back, I mean, not that like Ian Gillen, for instance, had that high pitched scream they did, but he didn't stay there all the time. Whereas Dan McCafferty is just up in that screaming range. You know, he has that always makes me think of Brian Johnson or uh, Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, that kind of real gravelly, really like intense, high pitched type of voice. I, and I just think he has an awesome, really cool, over the top type voice that works really great with that band and and he's somebody that I very rarely hear people mention his people mention his name okay next I don't have uh, anything on vinyl from uh, from the Ted Nugent band Derek St. Holmes uh, a lot of times people forget that Ted Nugent when they think of Ted Nugent and the early Ted Nugent they think that he sang all the stuff he didn't you know he did sing like cat scratch fever and some of the some some of that stuff he sang but Derek St. Holmes sang a lot of stuff and he had an amazing voice he had this tenor voice but it had a lot of uh, uh, roundness to it bassiness to a very full very powerful you know I think of Stranglehold his vocals and Stranglehold are just fantastic I kind of wish that, that he had sang more with Ted Nugent actually because I think he just has an amazing voice so he's another guy that I think it's underrated and doesn't really show up on many people if he shows up on people's lists at all. Okay, next one for me, number three, and I didn't really put these in any particular order, but uh, Peter Gabriel from Genesis. And I would say in the 80s, he started getting more recognition when his solo career, Sledgehammer and all that stuff, the MTV stuff. But I don't know if a lot of people, if you're just somebody who only knows Genesis from the 70s stuff, you probably don't even realize that Peter Gabriel, if you, if you only know Genesis for the 80s stuff, you probably don't even know that Peter Gabriel was in the band. I know I didn't for the longest time. I knew of Peter Gabriel as a solo artist before I realized that he was in Genesis. And, uh, you know, I made a video where I talked about bands that I couldn't get into, and I mentioned Genesis as being one of them. And I've ever so slightly started to get into them a little bit more, and I've been listening to this record a lot, and it made me realize what an amazing voice he has. Uh, what great lyrics he has, very sort of uh, imagery, great imagery and playing with words and the symbolism and everything. And uh, he's able to kind of play characters a little bit with his voice. And he just has a great, great range. And he's not like a shouter. He's not like a guy belting super high up in his range. But he has a fantastic range and he has this kind of really relaxed, just a really nice tone to his voice. So I'm going to put Peter Gabriel on my list, especially the 70s Genesis era Peter Gabriel. Okay, uh, from Humble Pie, Steve Marriott. He's another guy that you hear Kevin Dubrow used to always cite Steve Marriott as an influence. And he has another cool, kind of like uh, Dan McCafferty, not quite as gritty as him, but sort of in that direction, sort of like that Rod Stewart type of gravel to his voice, really bluesy. I just think he has a really cool voice. And he, again, he's got that sort of gravelly, whiskey-soaked type of voice. And it works perfect with this band, this kind of bluesy, hard rock sound. 
All right, and the last one for me, and I made a video recently, not sure if I'm going to post this yet or later, ranking the David Byron era Uriah Heap albums, but I always felt like David Byron was underrated, like criminally underrated in my opinion. He's one of the greatest of the 70s uh, rock singers. He has an amazing voice, tons of range, uh, character to his voice he can sing ballads he can sing the more aggressive stuff the more harder stuff and i just think he has a great tone great range his lyrics are really great it's probably you know all these artists that i've mentioned here their bands were never as big as queen or led zeppelin and that plays a part of it when you see these lists and people ranking the best of and i'm going to make a video on why you can't take these lists seriously uh, but that's part of the reason why some of these singers are under these singers are underrated in my opinion. They were never in the bands that were huge, huge bands. You know, and another one that, that comes to mind that I could have put on this list too was Brad Delp from Boston. Even though as popular as Boston is, uh, I'm not sure a lot of people realize who he who he was, his name. You kind of just think of Boston as the band and Tom Scholz. But he was also another amazing singer that shocks me that he doesn't land like in the top 10 of everybody's list of albums from the series. I kind of didn't put him on here because Boston is so popular, but he doesn't have kind of that name recognition that somebody like Freddie Mercury or Robert Plant or David Coverdale might, or Paul Rogers, for instance. He's another guy that ranks always high on people's lists. And I like Paul Rogers and he has a cool kind of bluesy voice, but honestly, I like these singers better than I like Paul Rogers. So, okay, let me know what you think of some of my picks underrated 70s hard rock singers let me know some of your picks who would you pick for a singer that doesn't get the uh, recognition that they deserve from the it's a, mostly known as a 70s uh, rock singer let me know down below till we see you again make sure you stay heavy stay metal